the lounge chair of the bush. Now this is a term that some people use when talking about the DRZ400 here in Australia due to its soft suspension. I 100% agree that the suspension is soft, hence why I upgraded my suspension a couple of years ago. But the bike is built to a price point and for most riders the stock suspension will get the job done. Now just like everything else on a motorcycle, the suspension needs some love every now and then, even more so when it comes to off-road motorcycles. Since I upgraded my suspension years ago, I've completed some big adventures along the way. I rode halfway across Australia and across the Simpson Desert, tackled Cape York and the northernmost point of Australia with another 5,000 km adventure, plus my most recent adventure to the steep and rocky Victorian high country, which was a punishing ride. After all of this, I've started to notice that the suspension on the bike just isn't performing as it should. So in this video, it's time to get to work, get the DRZ suspension sorted out and ready for the next adventure. G'day everybody and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well as usual, out in the shed as you can see. And today we're working on the bike. Now to me, the next best thing to actually being out on this bike and riding, having some fun, is getting out in the shed, getting the tools out and tinkering away on the bike. But today I'm talking suspension. I'm getting the tools out and I'm ripping off the front forks and the rear shock on this bike as well. I need to get some work done to it. So guys, a quick run through of the suspension on this bike. Obviously when I got it brand new, I left in the stock suspension for about a year and a half, I think it was. And then two years ago, I did my Simpson Desert trip. Now I had to upgrade the suspension before that with so many sand dunes out there through the desert and all the extra water and fuel and the luggage that I had on the back, I needed a stiffer spring setup. So I changed the rear, I changed the front and that got the job done. After the desert trip, I was pretty happy with the front fork setup, it went well. The rear, I was a little bit disappointed. I probably should have went something a little bit stiffer in the rear with all that fuel and water on the back through all those dunes, it was just bouncing around, it wasn't perfect. Could have been a little bit better. Now obviously every ride I do, I'm not carrying all that extra fuel and water on the back. So overall the past two years, it's been pretty good. It's done the job, but right now I'm looking to upgrade it. Now before the high country trip that I just did, I did want to upgrade the suspension before that, but I didn't get a chance, I didn't have the funds. So I'm looking at doing it now, but that high country trip absolutely flogged this suspension out and probably ruined the last of what was left in it. The front forks are super soft. I struggled on a lot of those tracks in the high country, especially the real steep stuff and the real big rocky stuff. The front was just so soft, dipping in to everything and it just was not a fun time on the bike. The rear shock held in okay for most of it, but it's maxed out on the preload, so I'm gonna look at upgrading it. Generally, the suspension just needs a good service overall, really. Now, we'll talk about what suspension and spring rates is in it currently and about what I'm gonna try and move it to. But before that, I'm gonna get the tools out take these front forks off, get this rear shock out, and then I'll give you guys a better look over on the bench. So if any of you are interested in how to get your suspension out of the bike, it's not that difficult of a job. I did have a go at it a few years ago when I got the suspension done and uh, I didn't have it on a stand. So this is me not knowing anything. Pulled the rear shock out while the bike was just sitting on its wheels. I don't know how I really did it, but anyway, as soon as I pulled the shock out, back of the bike just boom, squatted down, bike fell over. Just dramas, <laughs> so don't do that. But it's not that difficult, guys. For the rear shock, you're gonna wanna go and take off your rear tire firstly. That'll be job number one. Then you're gonna wanna lift your swing arm up here at the back and try and hold that up while you undo some of these linkage bolts here to get to your rear shock at the bottom, which is just here. So once you move all that and get that out of the way and unhooked from the shock, you got access to that. And then it's just as simple as removing these plastic so you can get access to the side of the shock and there's a bolt at the top holding the top of it. Once you undo that, it will just drop out the bottom for you. And then for the forks at the front, they're even easier. But same again, take your tire off, get that out of the way. And then you've just got all your bolts up here to undo. These two here, these couple up here, and then your forks will just slide down. Obviously there's a few other things like your brake calipers and stuff like that to undo, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Once you start trying to get it off and move it down, if something's holding it there, just be careful, find out what it is remove it and then it should all come out nice and easy.
there you go guys, that's step one basically. Rear tire off as you would have seen, and then undone these linkage bolts up here. It's nice having a neat and tidy shed. You can just lay everything out here, so you know what come off where, so it's easy to put back together when you get up to it. Plastics are all off. Now if you can see in there, behind my thumb, you'll see that bolt way up in there. Hopefully you can see that on the camera, but anyway, there's a couple of cables you've got to pull out of the way to get to it. Undo that. Oh, and also, almost forgot, the exhaust has to come off, because that's in the way here. That, you can't pull that down without the exhaust being moved. So that was one other thing I forgot to mention. So I've only got that bolt there. Uh, another one here that I don't have, it's rattled loose, and then we'll just pull this one out as well. Then we can drop it down, yeah. Exhaust has to go. Almost forgot that one. Well, that was a bit of a pain, that last bolt. I had to bring out the big guns here. The nut on this side, so the nut in here, I haven't fully taken it off so I can pull the shock down when I get it off, but that nut on this side was so, so tight. I was trying to undo it with the 14 mil and it was just starting to spin. I was gonna strip that thing. So I went over to the other side, pulled the plastic off in here. Walk around here so you're not upside down. Pulled the plastic off over here and you got the bolt that goes through. That's a 12 mil. Tried doing the same with that by hand, but I just, I was too worried that I was gonna strip that one as well. I don't know if I've taken this out since or if I got the shop to do it. I don't know why it's so tight. Maybe I tightened it up crazy tight last time, but Got the drill out, held the 14 spanner on there, got the drill on the 12, and luckily enough it spun out eventually without ruining it, because that would be a bad day in there if you strip that nut and can't get it off, but we're good. I can finally slide that shock down and get it out now. There we are, both front forks are out now. And uh, yeah, these things are so squishy and soft. <laughs> I did take one of these off last year to get replaced, uh, the seal replaced, it was leaking. Just took it to a shop, got it fixed up. But I don't remember them being this soft and easy to push down like that. I'm not sure what's going on there, has the spring just worn out? Low on oil, whatever it is. I'm not a suspension guru, so I have no idea, but we'll take it away and get some stiffer springs. I would much rather that be a lot stiffer if I can just push that down like that, like a pogo stick. I feel like it's not ideal. So that's probably why the bike wasn't handling too good in the high country. I just kept lifting the front, it just kept bouncing off everything and it was a pain in the backside. So both front forks and the rear shock, it has Racetech branded suspension in them. When I got it done two years ago, I got the 49 kilogram springs in these front forks, but I'm looking to step it up to probably a 52. I used a calculator online with Racetech suspension for this bike. And when you add a larger fuel tank, which is the only extra mod you can add on top, it suggests the 49 kilogram spring for my bike with my weight. But I've obviously got a tank bag with a lot of camera gear and stuff in it. I've got the tool kit up on the front as well, which adds a bit more weight up the front end. And I would just rather have a stiffer front end all up. I'm thinking the 52 kilogram might be a bit better suited for what I want. So as I said, guys, the rear shock race tech branded as well. Currently using the six kilogram shock. Uh, I've used the calculator online again with my weight and you can't really add your own luggage and stuff like that onto it. But allowing for that, I'm thinking I'm gonna need the 6.3 kilogram shock uh, to be a little bit stiffer than this thing. As you can see here, it's already maxed out on the preload there. So that's as stiff as I can get it. And it still rides around a bit soft for my liking, especially if I've got the luggage on the back going camping. But that's just my thoughts at this stage anyway. I will talk it over with the guys at the shop and see what they suggest. They obviously know this stuff a lot more than I do. So 
I'll get their thoughts before I jump in and do anything. Generally, I do like running a stiffer suspension setup. I feel like the bike handles a lot better and it's just the way I like to ride. It feels a lot better than having it super soft and dipping around in all the bumps. But anyway, guys, that's the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks for sticking around. I'm gonna load up the ute with these front forks and the rear shock as well and take this to the suspension shop and get all this sorted ASAP so I can have the bike back and ready to get out on some more adventures. I will do an updated video once I get the suspension back and chuck it back in the bike and we'll see how it goes, see how it handles and uh, yeah, see if I'm happy with the overall change of the bike. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Like the video before you go if you did enjoy this one and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out on any of the future videos and you can see how this suspension goes in the future with all these updated springs. Thanks, guys. Ride safe out there. See you all soon. Yeah.